So I just I want to say we are all together to get back this place. And I want to make a community here. A nice community with nice people, with no trash anymore, with no trash anymore, okay? And without criminal activity, no criminal activity, to be a nice, a nice and secure place here for people like me and people like Reggie. So we are in this point here because a few months ago, I said to these people here, I said, look, we must to keep this place clean. We must to keep this place without criminal activity. We must to keep this place, to keep each other, to respect each other. But I want to tell you honest something, okay? These people here, they can be criminal, they can be drug addict, they can be alcoholic, they can be anything, but they never touch my stuff. Never. I have no evidence these people they steal. If they do into the store or somewhere just for food, they do this just to survive, to simple survive. Because the city, the city is doing nothing to help these people to find out uh, like a house, you know what I mean? like a portable house. But I want to be clear. I want to be clear. It's okay. I want to be clear. This place which I love, this is my house. The 19th of this month, when they uh, show up here, wherever, cops, bulldozer, everything, I will stay here to protect my place. But if they ever say, the cops say, okay, so you know, you must leave. If no, we are going to enforce you. Okay, I respect the rules, I will leave. But I will be back here with the legal issue who touch my place. I will be here because I know my rights. I am a human being like all these people here. And we are, we know the sir to be throw in the middle of nowhere just because you decide you decide you decide to give us five days time to live. Five days they are nothing. Totally nothing. At the at least they give us opportunity to 30 days. They give it to me. 45 days, something like that. But my goal is to stay here and to build a nice community if if i can if i can if these people here agree me with they agree with me and they follow me if no i say okay sir you know you must go i will live if the cop start to show up again here uh, to repeat the same situation the same trash the same shit Again, I will say, okay, I say honest to people, I have no criminal record, I have my freedom, my full freedom. Because actually when you get a criminal record, you have no f your full freedom. You agree with me? No way. In my country, it's like that. Oh, yeah. You have no full freedom. I, I, so, these people here, tonight they are going to make a protest. They are going to make a protest. For me, it's a kind of with a disagree. Because we were supposed to meet each other here the 19th in the morning to make a protest here when they will come. Without violence, weapon, violence, weapon, you agree with me? And fire, screaming, yelling, I am against her, totally against that. But I want to make a clear something, okay? I want to make a clear something, okay? So 
I want to make it clear. If, example, they arrest uh, some people or two peoples, they uh, they are not supposed to make uh, something in general. You know what I mean? To say everybody's criminals here. Okay, even me. Even me. If they say that. But if they say that, I challenge them. I show them I have a criminal record. <clears throat> I am a nice people. I try to do something better for this place. I have a determination to start to buy tomorrow morning. If they give me a chance. I have a determination to start tomorrow morning. If they give me a chance. No check. No money. Just free. Because I, I, I wish to help people to keep this place here and to let the people in freedom, but always to follow the rules, to be respectful with the law. You understand what I mean? With the law, everything. I am an advocate for this place to stay open. However, I do believe it needs to be cleaned up a little with the garbage, with the drug activity, with the stealing. I've been the victim of the stealing. I have had money, most importantly, but my home got destroyed. I'm stuck in that tiny little tent crawling around on the ground with barely any belongings because my money, my items that I came with were stolen. And I don't think people should do that. And I think there should be a noise curfew whatever that's called, I, my brain's foggy on that, but from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., no noisy motors, uh, you have to be quiet, um, turn your lights down, um, just don't be disruptive to people trying to sleep between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. because those are quiet hours, that's it, quiet hours. <laughs> and I am an advocate for this place to stay open because un unfortunately, um, I ended up here because of the housing shortage and I need to be here, but I need to be here with better conditions. I can't be in that tiny tent crawling out. I have broken ribs, I have pain in my back. That thing's killing me sleeping on the ground, it's agony. I need a better structure. Gardening shed <laughs> with a bed in it, a trailer with a bed in it, <laughs> like, not having to go to, you know, plumbing, water, not having the electricity, not having to go outside in the middle of the night because I have to go to the bathroom, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> I think that that could improve in that aspect, especially with winter coming. No one wants to go outside in their winter boots at 12 a.m. just to go to the bathroom <laughs> to walk through that, that coldness. And um, so that could improve for the winter getting people like into better buildings and but right now right now I, I I I do not agree with that structure I'm staying in now it is too small I'm crawling around the filthy dirty ground um, it's it's not right for my disability um, and the noise and everything that in the drug activity and people stealing from me is wreaking havoc with my mental health. And I'm just asking for a better building or a trailer or something like a gardening shed or just something with a bed in it and, and more of the things I need for daily activities, comfortably done indoors. And I, I really don't have a problem with this place staying open as long as everybody cleans up their act. And, you know, there isn't so much drug activity and, and stealing and, and, and just, just we live a, as a community and respect each other. It's kind of where we all have gathered, um, started a life, um, or tried to at least. It's, uh, there's good and bad, um, but we all seem to get along for the most part and make the best of what we have. Um, it's really too bad coming to an end or potentially coming to an end honestly this place has been here forever and what it, I think it's all the news castings that have been on it like since the first time this was in the news 
we started seeing an increase in cars driving by, taking pictures and staring at us and throwing rocks at us and just all kinds of stuff um, has happened since it really came to light that this was here to the general public. Um, before then, there weren't a whole lot of problems. I mean, I'm sure th the bad ones that, you know, steal stuff had police interactions here. But other than that, I mean, it wasn't really that well known about. Yeah. Um, and then all the news media, or the attention from the news, gathered everybody, and it's just been downhill from there. And I mean, they say some guy sh was showing a gun. That's yeah, he had a BB gun that looks like an AR-15, but he didn't point it at anyone. He didn't. He wasn't trying to scare people. He. It's just it's ridiculous. Like I was out there for the whole thing, and I'll be testifying for him along with all of the other camp parts of the camp that witnessed that um it's uh it's too bad we could definitely do a lot to make it a little more uh appealing i guess you could say uh or less of an eyesore i battle with that every day trying to keep my area clean and some days you get it some days you don't as far as the criminal part i mean Wherever you go, there's criminals. There's, I mean, you go to an apartment complex, there's going to be criminals there. That, you know, I, I don't know, we're all just humans. Ideally, um, if, if I had it my way, um, it would be just tell us what we need to do to fit in, I guess. You, um, I'm sure cleanliness is part of it. Um, how can we make this work? It's, there was no resolution offered it was just hey you have five days to get out yeah. I mean and she stated the mayor had stated that this place has only been here since April this place has been here over a decade I hear of people coming and going from here 10 years 15 years ago um, granted now it's more populated um, there's a way it could work uh, and I, I definitely agree with a lot of the mayor's points um, but the way it's being handled isn't isn't fair to us. I mean, I have I, I have a lot of stuff. I, I I'm a business owner, and I I have a lot of stuff and nowhere to bring it. Um, yeah, it's kind of abrupt, and I mean, on top of that, five days, I, two two or three of those days have been complete rain. Like, what 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 do we do? There are the people without a vehicle. Um, how are they supposed to? use those days in a way that works for them. I mean, it's not, it doesn't seem very fair. Uh, I mean, and granted we don't rent the place, but g general renters rights, you, you at least get what, 30 or 90 days or something notice. I mean, and I'm not saying that's how it should be because we don't rent here. We just kind of stay here, but there's gotta be some kind of happy medium if we do have to leave that makes it so we're not losing everything, so everything we've worked on isn't for nothing. I have a camper down here, um, and that's, I've had to rebuild it from the inside while living in it. It's still not done, and now to have to leave takes my focus away from winterizing it. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm screwed to say the least. Uh, I, I don't even have good tires on it that'll hold, that'll hold air, I mean. And it's not a matter of finding the tires, because I can get tires. It's a matter of the time to put them on when I'm trying to take care of all of this. Sears Lane, to a lot of people, has become a sanctuary, more than just a homeless encampment. I've never had a city official or anyone from the city other than law enforcement come talk to me. And it's always been to ask, who did what? Where is this? Who stole that? It's never been to tell me their, their problem with us. Like, I understand, yes, it's trashed right now. Um, it's not everybody, though. And I, I have been persuading people to help clean up. It's just with everything going on, yeah. a lot of people have gotten to a depressed stage because this is, this is their home. This is their last resort, and now the, the city is taking away their home. I can't say that all people here don't have another place to go, but I know a good sum of a lot of people here don't. There's elderly here who 
I watched last year nearly break a hip trying to get up out of her tent because she doesn't have a retirement fund. She doesn't have family anymore because so on and so forth. And I've seen a lot of good people here get crushed by, I don't even know how to say it, the slander that we get just for being homeless. Sears Lane is willing to cooperate and I've talked to everybody, including some who may not agree, but to an extent they do. They don't want to lose this place. They've built lives here. They've built, again, their homes here. There, people here are willing to cooperate as long as we're able to be heard and understood. Not a lot of us had a choice to be here. Recently here, there was a drug raid and one person out of that raid was arrested. Criminal activity, I can't speak for everybody because I know there are some here who are completely guilty. I'm not gonna name names. Um, it's not everybody. There are people here who are just trying to live everyday lives like the next person. Sears Lane will work together. I know they will because we've grown to know each other. We're each other's neighbors. We are right next to each other, all up in each other's business. <laughs> all the time, no matter what. We can hear a whisper 30 feet away sometimes, even with the generators. Again, I can't say everybody will cooperate due to their own reason, but I know most people here, like, there's only probably two people here that won't cooperate. But everybody does want this place to stay because a lot of us really don't have anywhere else to go. There's really no reason to slander us. There's no reason to put us down. We are not pigs. We are not all criminals. We just, unfortunate things happen to us and that happens to everybody. Some more than others, some less than others, some react in different ways. This is just where we ended up and I'm pretty happy to be here because I had I was never able to really call a place home and this is the first place I've actually wanted to stay and be a part of. I moved into Sears Lane Camp six years ago spent um, most of that year uh, living in the camp I've been involved with the camp ever since uh, since I was on the steering committee of the Chittenden County Homeless Alliance I've got very involved and in integrated into the uh, homeless services community um, and since I concluded my term with the Alliance I have been interested in and active in defending the rights of people to have a home even when they don't pay rent and when they don't have a mortgage it's pretty plain that there are a lot of personalities and a lot of different ways of being in the world here um, there's a fair portion of people who are rent protesters, so I don't want to pay money to a landlord and let them keep all the money and I'm, I'm left broke. Um, there's uh, any number of folks here who just want to do their thing. Uh, there are people here who are without any other place to go that they are aware of. I mean... You got you hunt around and you hunt around and you you don't see any place that seems viable and then you end up here. I'm not going to say the city had to do this eviction thing to get to where the negotiation could open. I don't think that's true, but the city still has an opportunity to work with people here to build the community that is safe, clean, and internally regulated. And it just has to decide that it's going to have a homeless camp and that it needs to create a framework for that community to thrive. I mean, as of up to this point in this moment in time, it has acted as under the terms of its understanding this is trespassing and there is no way to be legal and that's wrong when 
when people need a place to live and they find find the unoccupied land and the land belongs to the city in the first place the job of the city the job of any community is to find a way for people to have a place to live and if this is where we find to live then we need to also figure out how to make it work so one of the complaints that the city has of course is that the housing is unsafe I personally think that that's more of a rhetorical um, kind of objection so a way of saying oh the housing is so unsafe it's not okay it's illegal well if that's the problem help people build houses tiny houses um, make small structures that can be insulated do it find the f you, you got all the ARPA money right you could do it just do it build build good housing Help the people to build the housing. The people here who are perfectly capable of building housing. Yeah, yeah, just work it out, make it happen. It's a community and the people here are willing to do the work. That's what people want, an opportunity to take care of themselves, to do the work, to build their own home and not pay what money they have so somebody else could put it in their bank account. Sears Lane has existed then probably most of you have been in this town. It's been around since before I was born. People have been living there. This land is for people and the city <laughs> taking it back abruptly right before winter is inhumane. It is an act of violence. It is an act of state sanctioned violence against the most, member, or most vulnerable members of our community. And we need to come together and demand it stops. It never should have happened. And I'm going to try my damnedest to make sure they back out. Not even give people more time, just stop all this fucking nonsense. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna have some people speak their minds, residents of Burlington. We got some people from the camp that might wanna speak. I, I can't you know, guarantee any of that because they're vulnerable people and they will be targeted by the police for speaking out in their own defense. And that's why we have to stand up and fight for people. Like that's what this shit's about, is coming together and protecting people when the state is trying to literally kill them. I'm just here to give a little bit of the like, sort of background context of like, yeah the background context of like what is actually happening here today and what has happened over the past couple of weeks and why is this so fucked up. So let me just get to the right part of my document. Um, okay. Burlington is evicting our houseless comrades. We need your support. That's why you're here. The city of Burlington has given campers at Sears Lane and the South End five days notice to leave or face legal consequences. This comes directly after the city had put out a request seeking a nonprofit to help manage the encampment in a way that would have allowed for some of the structures and people to remain in place. Instead of following through with that program, as imperfect as it was, the city conducted a raid on the camp a few days ago. Now, because one person was arrested, the entire camp has been threatened with legal action if they don't leave by the 19th at 5 p.m. We need to show up for our friends. Join us, join the campers, join Burlington Cop Watch, Food Not Cops, all the people who are here. Listen, listen, listen. It's, it's important that we show up for the houses community because on every, okay, you want the mic? What's up, what's going on? Relax, can I say, can I do my thing? Can I let, can you let the black person speak? Yeah, the black person. Okay, so um, yeah, it's just important because that y'all remember that on every given day, we're more closer, we're closer to being homeless than we are to being billionaires. Like, let that be known. Um, like last summer, and a couple of months ago, like I was experiencing like houselessness, like I was couch surfing, like what the fuck? Um, it could happen to any of us. Like I'm a 20, 21 year old college student. Uh, and yeah, so humble yourself and also come out tomorrow to like, you know, show up for us, show up for your community and be there and 
I see some city councilors here and I'm glad y'all are here, but it's like, how can you how can you be a part of administration that literally is classic, classist, ableist, like all these isms continuously. Like he is a perpetual fucker and I'm over it. Like he should have been voted out. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Like we ain't gonna go there, we ain't gonna go there. Max Tracy, I'm so sorry, that ugly bitch like that. I'm so sorry, but anyway. Um, yeah, like come out, show up for your community because we all we got. We are all we got. We are each other's business. That's all I gotta say. Thank you. I'm Stephen Marshall and I've been part of the Sears Lane camp for about six years. I first moved in there uh, during a bout of homelessness um, <clears throat> at the invitation of some of the residents there. We were camping in the woods and the parking lot was empty. And it was a beautiful, beautiful place. And I really, I really have, just can't tell you how emotional I get when I think about living there. We had a campfire and we had a good time. Um, we had our conflicts and issues too. Don't get me wrong. But anyway, so uh, I've been an advocate for the uh, homeless community in Burlington and for the Sears Lane camp for these six years. When, um, at one point we had an eviction, the camp was closed. There was somebody in the camp who was dealing drugs and uh, there were a few incidences with guns. And the truth is that the people in the camp wanted it closed because they felt so unsafe with the people who were there. So it was all cool. The, those folks uh, ended up in a hotel or uh, the folks who were causing the trouble and everybody else got into shelters, the people who got into who were causing the trouble ended up in a hotel or an apartment or something, and it all worked out. The following year, I, I brought people back. You know, the neighborhood thought, hey, it's closed now, great. Well, it wasn't closed, it was an, it was an open space, it was available for homeless folks, and we were gonna use it. So, thank you. Yes, uh, it's really important to me that Sears Lane Camp remains available for homeless people to occupy when they need to. Let me put it to you this way. I'm gonna jump way ahead in, my, in the arc of my story just to say this. If this camp closes, it will not be you, we will not be able to use it again for within memory, you know, projecting into the future. How do you know? People will have to have forgotten about this episode before the camp can be occupied again. So what is that, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years? Who knows? Probably they will develop it before it gets used again and it will be closed as a place for homeless people. It is imperative that we keep this camp open so that people can live there. Thank you, Stephen. Um, you've always helped me since I moved in there. Um, me and my girlfriend moved in here a couple years ago. We didn't have nowhere to go. Um, I lived in a tent with her. Um, there was only two people on the property. Some several people moved across the fence. And, um, you know, they did their life, we did ours, we mined our business, they minded ours. I came home one day, everything I owned was burned and destroyed because we wanted to mine our own business. And uh, I recuperated, I got a job, I bought a pop-up trailer. Um, more people moved in across the street that still currently live there. They stole my pop-up trailer, cut it through the fence, and it's still there on that property. Um, I have been wronged by several people there that still currently live there, but I can't say names, I would never. Um, but my story is very prevalent down there and I still live right across the road now to protect the two businesses across the road. Um, and there is a lot of good people in that camp and I've always been through there every day since that place started, since I've been around. I now harbor no ill will towards the people that did what they did. I've recuperated, I've re caught my losses, I bought a new trailer, you know, uh, I went to Pete's RV, I keep investing, keep investing. And, and it's not, nothing towards anybody, I like my lifestyle like that too. Um, but just because I have a bigger RV doesn't mean nothing. Um, I still live off the grid. Um, everything I had destroyed, and, and I watched all the criminal element all night long. I never thought for a million years, in a million years, that I would end up there. Um, I was stalked. I have extenuating circumstances. I've been trying to get on my feet for four years. Um, I have a license in clinical social work and massage therapy, and I was essentially chased out of my own home. And I don't want to talk too much about that because what I'm more interested in is sort of what other people have experienced. And I've done some interviewing um, and talked to some folks and 
Believe it or not, a lot of the folks that are homeless these days don't even understand what happened. Um, everyone's got their own story about how things went down, and um, people would be surprised. You know, there's a lot of judgment that that takes place, and people are uninformed. They don't realize that people who are homeless do have extenuating circumstances that need to be addressed, and a lot of it involves things like mental illness, which uh, there seems to be a, a bit of shame around, and um, things that need to be dispelled, and people need to be advocated for appropriately. Um, so I just want to say, yeah, and we don't know where we're going to be laying our head in a few days here, and uh, we really appreciate all your support. And uh, hopefully you will never have to have this experience. That's my blessing for you. My name is Chrysanthemum. I am a trans femme and UVM community activist. Um, and I think that this clearing of the camp follows in the history of a lot of UVM and Burlington's history of settler violence and colonialism. Because um, we are sitting here today on stolen Abenaki land. And even more broadly, I think that us here as UVM students, and I see a lot of UVM students here today, uh, we have a particular responsibility in this community to stand up for the people who are more vulnerable. Because not only is UVM a predominantly white and rich institution, but the impact that it's having on the housing crisis in this city is insane. You look at the condos and apartments on, for rent on campus at the Redstone Apartments, they are averaging around $1,100 to $1,200 a month for a single bedroom in rent. How are people supposed to afford that? And what impact is that having on our community as a whole? And so to UVM students, I just want to say that we have a responsibility to step up in the next couple of days. I expect each and every one of you to go into your classes, into your dorms, into your group chats, into your floor chats, and tell everybody about what's going on. Oh, and yeah. tell everybody about how they can participate in the oh, solution. Yeah. Because students in this city we hold all of the power to alter change. We are the economic base of this city. UVM is the largest economic institution in this region. And we just need to step up. We really do. We really need to step up big time. And so I hope that I see all of you guys there at City Council tomorrow evening. I hope that all of you are reaching out to your friends about coming out on Tuesday. And we just have to be prepared to stand up for the vulnerable people in our community.